What is going on YouTube and welcome back to the JDW Sports Talk Show where every fan is welcome and in this episode I'm going to be giving you the floor and ceiling for the 2021 Indianapolis Colts. Um, so if you're new to the channel make sure to drop a like and subscribe, put the post notification bell on so you don't miss future videos and let's get right into the video. So the Indianapolis Colts, right, we made some big moves. Um, as we know, Phil Rivers retired, we had a decent year last year, right? It was, it was a solid year, you know? We made the playoffs. We had a very good run game, decent quarterback play. Um, but our biggest issue was red zone play. And with Phillip Rivers not being able to be mobile, which really limited our offense, made it predictable, um, it was really difficult to have a dynamic offense. I guess you would say that to the point um, keeps defenses on their toes. Because, you know, you never had that threat of Rivers running. You never had that problem. And especially in the red zone, that makes it a lot more difficult in the red zone. Um, so now that we have a quarterback in Carson Wentz that can maneuver the pocket a little bit more, he could run, he could run for a first down if we need, he could open up things in the red zone as well um, and, all, and all over the field as well even more. Um, now, I'm not saying Phil Rivers is terrible. You know, he did the job and he did very well for what he has. Um, with no mobility, his arm is very solid towards the end of his career last year. His arm was definitely declining, and, and, and you could definitely see it at times. And, you know, but Carson Wentz is opposite. You know, he's going into his prime. He's he's a little bit more mobile. He can get out of situations in a pinch if you need him to. You can run RPO, quarterback runs. You could do a lot with him. And you got to realize that Phillip Rivers, um, love Phillip Rivers. You know, he, he, he has awesome energy. He has that. But at the end of the day, the NFL is evolving. And to improve that red zone game, Carson Wentz is going to help that a lot. So, you know, say the Colts, you know, Carson Wentz really struggles again. Maybe he's a little bit better, but not much better. Um, maybe the wire, maybe we get a few injuries to the wide receiver group. Maybe um, we get some more injuries to the offensive line again. Um, maybe DeForest Buckner goes down. Maybe Xavier Rhodes goes down. Maybe something happens with a few big players and we, and we struggle. Um, and Carson Wentz doesn't have a great year. But I don't see all that happening, you know. But that's the floor, and that's a realistic possibility. It's the NFL. Injuries are going to happen, and you're going to have to have other guys step up, but just don't perform the same as the player that went down, right? As we saw last year when Darius Leonard was out for a few games. We really seen a difference in the defense, and when Leonard came back, it was a bit better. And then we saw when Buckner was out of game. Derrick Henry and the Titans ran all over us. And it just shows. It just shows that, you know, when you're go going from a star player to a backup guy, even though he's solid depth, you're still going to see a decline. And you're still going to see a bit of a, what do you call it? Like a bit of a, I'm just saying, I'm just going to say decline because I don't know what else to say for it, but you're not going to see a drop off. That's what I'm trying to get to. And, you know, I think we're going to stay healthy. You know, a lot of our guys got some injuries out of the way, I guess you could say. Um, but re-injury re -injury is possible. As we know, um, it's happened in the past plenty of times. But, you know, sometimes it's better to get injured early on and maybe be healthy for the season rather than um, get injured right before the playoffs and then have to miss out the entire playoffs. Um, ironically, that happened to Carson Wentz and Big Nick Foles thing, ironically. But... So the floor for this team, I'd say, is seven, eight wins because, you know, if we have a few injuries, this team is solid. We have solid depth players. We have players that can, you know, do very well if needed to step up. Um, Carson Wentz, you know, if he goes down, we do have some guys to back him up or if Carson Wentz just doesn't play well, you know, I, we still got a solid team. Um, so the floor, seven, eight wins, in my opinion, maybe six. Um and then you go to the ceiling. You know, Carson Wentz returns to somewhat of form. It doesn't even have to be an MVP form. But we're talking about the ceiling, so we're sick. so I'm going to say it is. You know, returns to MVP form. Um, you know, but that's not really re like realistic. So you can't really say it's the ceiling. But say he returns to a very good form. You know, maybe not MVP caliber, but maybe enough to. Make big plays when we need them. Make big plays on the ground. Make big plays with his legs or his arm or whatever he has to do. Or, you know, 
maybe it's the run game making big plays and then opening things up for opening things up for Carson Wentz, as that'll probably happen. You know, having a very good run game definitely helps a quarterback, and then the offensive line stays healthy, which usually it does pretty good with staying healthy. Um, don't forget we did lose Costanzo. That was definitely a big key, for, like player that we lost. But we did sign Eric Fisher, and Eric Fisher does. You know, he may not play Week One. I don't think he's going to. Um, but that's why we're having that tackle battle. That's why we have the competition. That's why we have Sound Heavy, Davenport, Holden. That's why we have all these guys fighting for that spot. Even though none of these guys have really looked very good. Um, Sam Tevy has not looked very good at all. Um, Julian Davenport, eh, eh. Will Holden hasn't looked very good. Um, you know, but we need to find someone to fill in for Fisher while he's not in. And until Fisher returns, I left tackle is a big concern. Um, but, you know, I think our wide receivers are better than people think. You know, Mike Schreiner is a training camp rookie standout. Um, really excited to see him. Michael Pittman he heading into his second year, even though I've heard he he has been dropping some in training camp, which has been surprising. Um, he's been drop and he dropped the ball in the game as well. So, you know, hopefully that doesn't translate to the um, regular season, which I don't think it will. I think Pittman will be fine in the regular season because he make because he makes some really great catches. He's just gotta, you know, focus up a bit. And, you know, and then of course, you have to wide the vet. Um, his, his presence is great, whether it's helping the young guys off the field, whether whatever it is, he makes an impact on and off the field. Um, Paris Campbell, hopefully he can stay healthy. If he stays healthy, he's a very dynamic player. Um, Zach Pascal is an awesome all-around player. Nothing crazy, nothing that's going to blow you off your socks, but Zach Pascal knows how to get the job done, and he is a very, very good player. Um, and, he, and he steps up when you need him. He steps up when you need someone, which is huge. You know, and then the running backs are very good. I don't, I'm not going to talk about the running backs too much because we know J-Train is amazing. Um, we know Marlon Mack is amazing. Naheem Hines is amazing. Wilkins is pretty darn good. Um, it's going to be a running back by committee, not going to be one guy. You know, we have Taylor Mack, Tyrell the defense in the first half, and then you have um, Taylor or Mack in the second half when the defense is tired, or maybe even Hines or Wilkins can come out when the defense is tired and play really well. You know, these guys could really – be big difference makers. And then tight ends, of course. I really like tight ends. Kylan Granson is a speedster. He's a vertical threat. Um, Jack Doyle, he's a jack of all trades. We all know about Jack Doyle. We all love him. Um, and Bo Alley Cox, the former college basketball player for VCU, um, with gigantic hands. He is gigantic. He's just a huge dude. You don't want to get in his way when he's running. You, 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 know, you just don't want to get in his way, period. Um, so... Yeah, the offense, I think, is going to be very good. The defense, um, I think, is very good as well. But there's definitely some more questions on defense than offense. Um, you know, you go to the defense side of the ball, you have Rhodes. Yeah, he's a very good corner. But, you know, I don't want to see him getting nicked up like he did last year. You know, that, that, you know, that really concerned me. That concerned me because, you know, yeah, he had a few times where he only went out two, three plays. You know, you think two, three plays won't be a big difference. But if you go back to that Buffalo Bills game, that two three plays then to have when um, Xavier Rhodes is out. Um, we had TJ Carey uh, and Stefan Diggs. Now I'm not saying TJ Carey is a bad player. He's a that player. He's a very solid player. But you know even the best corners are going to lose against Stefan Diggs at times. You know a very good route runner and he was on point with Josh Allen of course. So you know it just goes to show those one to two to three. However many plays your starter is out, it doesn't matter. That one play could be the big difference in the game, and that was a big difference, that touchdown. That long touchdown was a big difference. And people need to realize that, you know, being out two or three plays can be the difference in the game. It really could be. And, you know, the... And then, the you know, the rest of the defense, you know, the, you know, the linebackers are very good. Up Ricky... Uh, Leonard are really good. Yeah, yeah. Walker left. He was, he's with the Browns now, but um, I think someone's going to step up, whether it's Speed, Glasgow, um, Franklin, um, Adams. There's there's so many different people that can maybe step up here. Um, you know, and then you go to the defensive line. Buckner, Stewart on the inside, right? And you have Stallworth and those kind of guys. So, um, and then you go to the edge rusher where there's definitely some questions, but in um, training camp and in the preseason, 
there has been hope for edge rusher. Um, Ben Banigou has performed nicely. A has performed really nicely. Um, and we're we'll, and we're just gonna have to see how they translate to the NFL, how they translate to the regular season. Um, you know, Ben Banigou had that year last year where he wasn't seeing the field much because he wasn't giving the effort. He wasn't giving his one hundred and ten percent in practice. And that's how Eberflus and this staff is. If you're not going to put 110 into practice, then you're not going to play in the game. That's as simple as that. Um, so hopefully he learned from that. Hopefully that was a learning curve. You know, we kind of had the same thing with Tyquan Lewis, um, but he really showed out last year. You know, he could play on the inside, the outside. He, he's a solid guy. Um, Quiddy Pay is going to be a really good run stopper. Pass rusher, he's definitely got some things to work on. So, you know. Edge rusher is still a bit of concern. It definitely is. You know, you got Isaac Rochelle, al Muhammad, Muhammad, but my guy, I think Kamal Kutare is going to break out this year. Even though I haven't heard much from him in camp, which, you know, kind of bums me out because, you know, I, I really want to see Kamal Kutare do really well because I think he can. Um, but the bias aside, you know, Ben Banigou has been the one who has um, stepped up. You know, I don't really care who steps up. You know, it's just... You know, it was just a prediction of mine that I thought Kamal Kutari was going to do very well, and I was really banking on on him doing really well. But, you know, I've we've heard more of Ben Banigou showing up. So if it's Ben Banigou, so be it. You know, I'm okay with that, you know. Um, maybe Kamal Kutari is doing very well, and we're just not hearing much of him. Um, you know, there's a lot going on. And then, you know, I, 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 I didn't finish talking about the cornerback group, which I don't know why. Um, you know, you have Rocky Sin. Um, I've heard he has done decent in training camp. I've heard that um, TJ Carey has done okay. Um, Marvell Tell has had a decent one. You know, we've had some guys who have come in and, and, and who has had some decent training camps. And then the safety group, um, you know, it's a solid safety group. Blackman, Willis. Willis is very underrated. Um, Sean Davis, who we drafted. And then, and then there's another Sean Davis um, from Pittsburgh that we signed. Um, Odom, very good special teams guy. You know, we have a lot of players in this team that um, are going to be very good. But the question is, how how, how is this team going to come together? How is Carson Wentz going to perform under this pressure? Because um, he's definitely under pressure, that's for sure. That's without a doubt. And I want to see how he's going to perform under it. You know, um, as we and in the preseason, as we've seen, I really don't want Easton or Ellinger as a starter. Um, not even, I mean, yeah, for a week or two if you need to, okay. But I have not seen much from Ellinger. I have not seen, um, yeah, yeah, he's got really good like leadership skills. He's got that kind of stuff. But his arm, I don't know if it's NFL ready. I don't know if his arm is NFL type. Um, I don't know. It's just shown that he struggled to get the ball, to get some velocity on the ball when he needed it. Um, it you know, it just showed. And, you know, and then Eason, on the other hand, he gets too much on it. He doesn't know when to control it. So, you know, I really do want Carson to start week one, and I hope he does, and right now it's looking like he might. But if he doesn't, oh well. Easton or Ellinger will get it done, and I think it will be Easton week one. Um, I've been going back and forth on them two for forever. What do you guys think? I know, Marsh, you want Ellinger, of course. I know I know you, you really like Ellinger. Uh, I know some of you guys really like Easton. Um, you know, you could really go. You could really go either way. Honestly, um, they both have their ups and downs. Um, they're both depth guys. They're both backup guys, in my opinion. Um, now, Eason has the NFL type arm, but he, but he has to learn to control it. You know, he has to learn to not put too much juice on it, or you know, he has to be a little more accurate as well. As we've seen a few times, he's very inaccurate because he doesn't know how to control his arm. He doesn't know how to. Put a little bit of touch on the ball rather than just zip it in there. He's got too much zip. Well, 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 well like Ellinger has not enough zip. You know, <laughs> whatever though. You know, until we really see what happens week one, we don't know. Until we really see what comes down to the roster cuts, we don't know. Um, you know, I I wasn't at training camp at all, but I was talking off of, from what I've heard from you know, bring the Jews, Lawrence Owen. Um, maybe a little bit of culture shock. He doesn't. I know he's. I, I don't remember if he went to any at all, but I know he knows quite a bit. He's he, he's good with that stuff too. Um, I just haven't been able to get there. Um, but from what I've heard, 
I've heard some people are doing really good in the in the quarterbacks, eh, and from what we see in the preseason, it's all accurate. And we're and we're and we're gonna see what happens week one. We're gonna see who makes the roster. We're gonna see who sticks with the team and who doesn't. So I'm really excited for that. So let me know what you guys think about this Colts team. So I think the ceiling, the ceiling probably has to be what um, I'm gonna say eleven and. 6, 12, and 5. Um, so I think that's a solid ceiling. You know, um, but, this, but the floor is 6 to 8 wins, in my opinion. Um, that, but that's if everything goes wrong. But if a lot of things go right, not, not necessarily everything, I could see us being 11 and 5, 12 and 6. No, 11 and 6, 12 and 5. So let me know what you guys think about the Colts. Give me your four and your ceiling for the Indianapolis Colts this season. And I thank you for tuning in to the JDW Sports Talk Show, where every fan is welcome. As always, I will catch you guys in the next video. You guys have a great day, great night, whatever time it is. I'll catch you guys next time.